Hey there, and uh, welcome to Kung Fu Physics, where we are working our way through physics GRE practice problems, one at a time. And today's problem that I want to look at is off the 1996 practice exam. It's problem number 22. So if you got these run off, flip to number 22 on the 96 exam. If I'm grinning a little bit, it's because this is one of my all-time favorite problems that I've looked through of the practice problems. This is my favorite problem for a couple reasons. It is a, it's an easy classical mechanics problem. Um, it's about space and Mars, and I love astronomy and, and space stuff. And it trips a lot of really smart people up, but it's actually really easy to do. Um, I remember this problem came up in a review session. I was doing a physics GRE uh, review session with some other potential grad students and one of the smartest people that I ever know have ever known namely uh, one of my physics professors and advisors and and this guy is just up there I mean I consider him like I said one of the smartest people I ever know he blows me away intellectually I can tell you that so um, he got stumped by this problem and I can't remember if he couldn't actually solve the problem or if he did the problem and said nah, it's not worth doing because I remember him specifically saying that there were some fussy mathematics involved. And um, I looked at some of uh, uh, the, the popular website that has physics GRE solutions. Hopefully if you haven't found that you should go look for it. There's one out there. Um, it can be useful. I have to say though, with this problem as an example, I looked at the solution to this problem on there, and in all honesty, I think that the solution they have posted is crap, as well as a lot of the, the solutions in the comments. I didn't see anything that was similar to what I'll be doing to solve this, for example, and I consider the way that I'm doing it the right way to solve the problem. In this context, the right way to solve the problem is, what, what did the guy that developed this problem for the test have in mind when he wrote this problem and and did the answers because theoretically of course all these problems are solvable in under a couple minutes and so did the guy expect you to know all this stuff and go through all this stuff on the uh, solutions page that people are doing I don't think so now, I'm not bad-mouthing, I'm not really saying that there's not anything to be learned from looking at those solutions. I think there probably is. And I'm definitely not saying you can't solve the problem the way that they're doing it. But it's not the right way. The right way is the way that I'm going to show you, and, and I love this problem. So let's go ahead and start number 22, 1996 exam. I'm going to hold it up. I would usually scan through the answers, and they are just speeds in kilometers per second there, pretty big speeds. They don't help me, so I would read the problem. Number 22, the curvature of Mars is such that its surface drops a vertical distance of two meters for every 3,600 meters tangent to the surface. In addition, the gravitational acceleration near the surface is 0.4 times that near the surface of Earth. What is the speed of a, a golf ball would need to orbit Mars near the surface, ignoring the effects of air resistance? Yay, for once we get to ignore some air resistance. Okay, so uh, let's, let's get this golf ball going here. So I'm going to solve this problem using the simplest physics equation that you can think of. The physics kinematic freshman 101 equation, this. And what I would start with, and you'll see how this works as I do the problem, is I want to know how long it takes the golf ball to fall the two meters uh, near the surface of Mars as the problem sets up. So if I was just taking the golf ball and dropping it, how long would it take for that golf ball to travel two meters? And I would use this equation and so uh, it would just be the y position is given by the initial y position plus the velocity in the y plus the acceleration in the y times t squared like that and we start substituting in here the uh, y that I want to get to is 2 below where I started 
I'm going to say that I'm dropping the ball from my hand, which is at zero, and I'm not throwing it or up or down, so I'm going to put the initial y velocity as zero, and then the acceleration that I want here is the acceleration on Mars, and so it's going down in the same direction that this is going, so I need a negative sign, and it is 0.4 g times t squared. Instantaneously, you see g on the physics GRE. Uh, we all know that g is 9.8 meters per second per second here on good old planet Earth, but um, for the physics GRE, for our intents and purposes, g is 10. We always are going to make that. All the people that designed this test assume g is 10. So 0.4 times 10, well, negative 0.4 times 10 is just negative 4. Okay, so I would, uh, I'll rewrite this really quick so you can see it a little better. Uh, negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. t squared, it pops out really quick. I get t equals 1. Important uh, conclusion here, that on the surface of Mars, as they have described it, if I just drop the ball, in my hand, it takes one second to fall two meters. Now, they've described this situation to us that the surface of Mars drops that two meters vertically over 3,600 meters. In other words, if I go 3,600 meters tangent, the, the surface is going to drop. So I could draw, draw, uh, draw in sort of a little planet there and that's how it drops obviously not to scale look at how much bigger that 3600 meters would have to be so it takes one second to drop the two meters what i'm going to do is imagine my little tee here and a little golf ball and i need to get that golf ball here and i have one second to do it because if I just drop the golf ball from here, it would take one second to go two meters lower than where it's at. But I don't want the golf ball two meters lower than where it's at. I want it over here. How am I going to do it? Well, I'm going to give it a horizontal tangent velocity like this. And then I want to know how high that velocity is going to be. I need to traverse this much, 3,600 meters, in one second. How high does the velocity have to be? That's it. 3,600 meters in one second. That's how you solve the problem. Um, we'll talk about it a little bit if I have some time here. But that's it. That's how you solve the problem. That's the right way to do it. That's the easy way to do it. It's in the answers there. 3,600 meters per second is, of course, the same as... One of our answers there, which is 3.6 kilometers per second, that's the same. You change the units, 3,600 meters per second is the same as 3.6 kilometers per second. We arrive at our correct answer, which is C. Um, are, are you worried about this? Well, think to some of the other problems that I've been working through here. There's no air resistance, so all of the forces are conservative. It's actually a very simple problem. If we give it an initial velocity, we have a constant velocity and we have one centri centripetal force acting to cause a centripetal acceleration. So is this thing going to travel in a circle just above the surface on this little theoretical planet with this theoretical problem we've set up? How could it do anything else? One velocity one centripetal force, gravity, that's pulling the thing down, it's going to skim the planet in that little thing. I know it, it's hard to see exactly how this would work because now if I drew in my velocity here, it would be a little different. I would have the same velocity in the x direction and I would be adding a little bit of velocity in the y direction. If I redid my coordinate system though, at this point this would be a tangent velocity there as well and if you don't if you can't uh, convince that to yourself there's another way to do it and that is to just um, multiply the numbers or divide the numbers I mean I can do this same problem at the halfway point 
and say, well, it takes 1,800 meters. I can go 1,800 meters in uh, for every one vertical meter I drop. And that would be the point at the center, and I could do the problem that way. It's the exact same, and so certainly, whether I end up here or here, I'm going to be ending up just above the surface with the same velocity, um, a tangential velocity. Very cool problem. I want you to think about a couple things that I don't have time to go into, but the wording on the problem says speed, and so that's a speed that we're getting here. It doesn't specify that this velocity has to be tangent. The question I have to you that I think is productive to think about is, is it necessary to do the problem as I've done? It's certainly simplest to do the problem as I've done, drawing the velocity in tangent. But what would happen if I gave this golf ball this velocity that was not tangent, but say I put it at a 45 degree angle? When you do maximum distance problems, on rather than a curved surface like this, but a, a flat surface, we all remember doing maximum distance projectile motion problems. Were we firing the particle, the, the projectile, horizontal to get a maximum distance? I don't think so. We were definitely setting an angle there to get a maximum distance. So it seems maybe a little confusing why we are getting a, a circular orbit out of this. And what I want you to think about is how would this be changed? Would it be changed if you adjusted that angle? What if it was 45? What's going on? What are we talking about if it happened to be 90 degrees? I'm giving it the same speed, 3,600 meters. It doesn't seem like I'm gonna be doing a circular orbit if I launch it straight up, but what is happening? Um, does this have anything to do with Escape velocities. Escape velocities are worth looking up uh, for the physics GRE. Does this have anything to do with escape velocities? Uh, not quite, but it's, it's getting there. And this is another interesting thing. On, on the uh, Wikipedia page for escape velocities, you'll see an interesting picture that is actually related to this problem that uh, was from an analysis that Newton did. So that's worth looking up. I gotta wrap this up. Uh, if there's any equation that's worth memorizing or re-refreshing yourself on, it's just the position of an object undergoing constant acceleration, maybe the easiest um, physics formula that we all remember. But I just love how tricky that problem is to so many people, but how really easy it is. It just goes to show that the physics GRE is a tricky beast. So uh, good luck with your studying and I'll see you next time.